All right, y'all, I'm at Kamar Arms Channel. Okay, today we're checking out something that was sent to me a lot the last week or two, but this is a video from the Kraken unit, which we've checked out before a couple times, but um, it seems like since I last checked them out, their editing has gotten pretty freaking intense. So this video specifically has a lot of different angles, kind of what we're used to at this point, but uh, I will say there aren't any translations, but from what I've seen, kind of just clicking through it, there's not a whole lot of stuff that's really like dialogue driven to really kind of understand it. Um, or I guess even really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty hectic. It's about 12 minutes long and you guys will kind of see what I mean when I'm, when I'm talking about hectic. Now, before we get into that, I want to tell you guys about Wartrace Workshop. So I will put their Instagram page down in the description. You guys seriously need to check out their work because they sent me this. So this is a 105 millimeter howitzer shell from Ukraine that is... You can kind of see they're done up very, very nicely with paint. Uh, you can kind of see it on the, the bottom there. It's one of the coolest ideas I, I have seen for coming up with a way to, you know, get money to support these fighters. So you guys seriously need to check out their page. They have a lot of really fantastic artwork. So I will put that in the description down below. Definitely go and check them out. Jeez, I don't know if this is like a sensitive area or something and they're just not trying to kind of like show where their guys are at, but man, that's a big blur. Damn. Nice weapon setups. Oh, the Black Hornet, dude, no way. Yeah, dude, that's so freaking cool. I didn't know they had Black Hornets. Dude, that's sick. Yeah, so when I was going through the Army's Expeditionary Warrior Experiment, kind of like in the Army, we do this program, I guess, if you want to call it, where a unit will go out and test all of this combat gear. The Black Hornet was one of those things. So I got some hands on the Black Hornet. Very, very cool. Super small, super quiet. It's got like about a 20-minute runtime. I think from what I remember, like four kilometer kind of range. So it's pretty helpful, especially when you're talking about like an urban area, if you don't want people kind of like hearing it, it's a great tool for recon. You just bring one back. If you have like, kind of like the set he had there, you know, you could also have another one and you can send that one out right after while the other one charges. So really cool system. And the rifles look pretty, look like they all had pretty much ARs with like EOTX and some suppressors here and there. Dude, they got a, a GoPro on this or something? Is it a GoPro? Dude, what a view, man. What is that weapon? Again, this is... Man, the terrain these guys have to move through. With all these little positions here and there you have to worry about. If there is anything that I'm kind of missing as far as the um, what they're saying, definitely let me know. Do they survive that? Sure. Was that Daniel Defense AR? Whoa. Whoa! What the heck? What was going on there? What was he shooting at? Whoa! Is that a burst too? Damn. That thing had like no backblast. What was that? Sorry I'm pausing it so much, but... Yeah, that thing had like no backblast. It, I mean, it looks like an AT4. Uh, maybe... No? What is that? I'm not sure. This is like some of the most like intact foliage I think we've seen. This audio, this background audio is kind of creepy, dude. Damn, 
some interesting shots, man. But again, the drones just add so much more clarity and understanding. So this is a enemy column. So, I don't know if they're on the radio. It sounds like the guys might have identified the technicals as well, or they're being told about them, but... I mean, it looks like they had a pretty decent amount of anti-tank weapons before. And I also saw some grenade launchers, which are always handy, as we know, with these positions. <laughs> nice shot. That looked like an AT4 for sure. There you go. Uh, what kind of round is that? Are you firing? Dude, again, throwing a grenade with this like foliage. That wasn't so bad, but some of this foliage gets you, gets you concerned. They're going to hit like a branch or something. We've seen that a couple times already in these videos. Damn, yeah, no kidding. They have a few. This is kind of cool, seeing them like actually prepare everything too. Again, it's not something that's show shown too often. Interesting. Who developed this? I, I, I don't think I've ever seen this. This looks like maybe like an 81 kind of size mortar. Huh. Yeah, I've never seen that system before. Interesting. It seems pretty accurate. Were they just huddling up in the back? Does that thing not move anymore? Oh, okay, yeah, that thing uh, definitely doesn't move anymore, but what? Dude, I would not stand near that thing anymore. What is that flag? It's hard to see what terrain... Oh, damn, dude, that was... Yeah. I don't know what the casualty rate is on... Ca casualty radius is on those, but... That looked like that'll do it. Oh, seeing the drone perspectives is always cool too. Especially if you have the feed from the drone. I mean, it's cool. It's one thing to like show the screen and kind of show us focus, but. That's crazy, dude. Oh man, all these tanks just getting smacked. Is that a transport truck? Oh, dude. Golly, how many do they have? Nice. Yo, all these tanks getting destroyed, man. Those FPBs are freaking wild. Is he using that like kind of as like an anti-personnel weapon right there? Jeez, dude. I imagine that the enemy's pretty freaking close, judging by how they're, you know, not really staying out of cover too often or for too long. Damn, that thing's running. Nicely, dude. I just think of like our saws. Those things are beat up. No matter how much you maintain them, getting a nice burst like that is pretty much only exclusive to the initial engagement. Oh, jeez. Look at that, just these scarce tree lines left. 
And these tanks just completely reducing them. Golly, imagine being in that tree line, just seeing this tank coming towards you. Whew. Man. It seems like they're shooting pretty quick. I'm not sure if that tank itself is an autoloader, but... Again. again, a lot of different perspectives we're seeing here. Some unique, again, kind of like in the, the beginning with the GoPro. Man. Just goes to show why thermals are so scary, but also super nice to have on your side. It makes for adjusting fire super easily. Dude, they're just reducing this entire tree line. It's so crazy, it's like, that's like the only areas that they could find to build a somewhat covered, concealed position. And they just reduced it. Hmm. Seeing the operation center is kind of interesting as well. Seeing what systems they're working with, how they're labeling their, their maps, how they have their overlays set up. And also just their demeanor. Damn, this drone has some really nice clarity to it. I think I saw an article that said in Ukraine, there was like 65% of the world's DJI Phantoms or something. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's mental. You tell somebody that from like 2021 and they'd be kind of trying to figure out why that's the case, you know? Yo, and the RD, nice dude. Dude, just one stretch of trees, man. I gotta say, uh, I don't think it's gonna last the week. I think this is what two days, and they're just. Oh yeah, I saw that the BMP that ran over their own guys. It looks like intentional when I saw that. Just wild, dude. Oh man, that would cool. I know with the um, when we were traveling or working with the AAV guys, the amphibious assault vehicle crew, um, them and the tanks would call us or refer to the infantry guys as crunchies sometimes. You know, kind of for this meaning. But uh, yeah, luckily I never had to see that. But yeah, seeing seeing your buddy getting crushed by your own armored vehicle. Yeah, I don't know how to, how I feel about that. man and miraculously I don't know how wet everything is there I mean it seems pretty wet for the most part but not a whole lot of fires maybe in certain part of the, the year certain parts of the country it probably gets pretty dry but imagine if that whole tree line just went ablaze I don't know what that BMP was doing. Jeez. Even seeing the tracks like through the grass, you kind of like wonder what the story is behind that. It looks like they went and tried to drop some guys off or got something and then way back but it also kind of looks like it did another loop even what is that from like a cluster munition or something 
I think I saw that the U.S. gave Ukraine some cluster munitions. I'm not sure if that's what that was, but... Golly, man. Yeah, so I guess this is kind of how to support them or something, PayPal. Yeah, yeah, Kraken, uh, yeah, they're definitely still in the thick of it. That's that's for sure, just from this one video here. And I don't know how long this kind of duration was, but it looked like it was probably like a couple days. <laughs> Again, just focusing on that, that one kind of tree line there. Now, while we're seeing kind of similar things that these guys are having to contend with, whether it be the open areas or really just these kind of like, uh, I think they called it like shelter belts or these these tree line areas that these guys are having to clear out. Um, it's just odd. I'm, I would like to see kind of like more of a kind of satellite view of where all of these formations are, where all these positions are. Because again, it just looks like it's a, it's a massive open field and then in between kind of separating it, separating what was, I guess, like farmland or something, you have this kind of dense tree line and they're just putting positions there. So yeah, it's it's just wild. I mean, sometimes they get pretty desperate and that's when we kind of saw like some people running out of the, the tree line and into the open. Now thinking from the infantry perspective, trying to attack something like that, seems like it'd be pretty straightforward. But again, when you're kind of, when their position is surrounded by very open ground, you either have to attack from the open ground, which if you do, if you don't have any armored vehicles is you know not going to be great for you, especially once they start dropping artillery. Um, or you can just kind of travel through the tree line, which again we see is pretty much just as as you know difficult to contend with. You have all of their indirect fire weapons. You have all of their machine guns already set up. They have their fields of fire established, um, so they have the advantage by far. And having to assault in such a linear direction, um, you can't really utilize certain tactics as far as like flanking, because then you're just going to be flanking from, you know, outside of that tree line. And yeah, again, it's not going to be ideal. So as far as traditional tactics, you can't necessarily use them. In the Marine Corps, we like to do the whole, you know, buddy movements, buddy pairs, fire move where everybody's just bounding across like open fields. Again, like when you're talking about a conflict like this, it's not feasible to do that kind of stuff, especially with what we're seeing with these landmines, with these obstacles, with the the technicals that these guys are dealing with, the artillery especially. So a lot of things that I'm thinking about, and I'm always kind of wondering, how would I approach that? And at the end of the day, it's just, you know, what equipments do you have to kind of exploit, you know, the, the violence of that? So whether it be the tank, we saw that, that was... Um, a game changer. Once the tank is causing havoc, then it makes it a lot easier for the infantry guys to kind of, you know, exploit that a bit. But yeah, it, it kind of ends up you just needing something like that on your side. When you have something like that, that gets the enemy to be reacting much more, um, you kind of override what we call their OODA loop. So now that they're deciding, okay, do we want to abandon this position? Do we want to do X, Y, and Z? So now you have a little bit more control. So yeah, interesting. Let me know what your your guys' thoughts are. If there's anything that you guys are picking up on, if you guys have a sort of military tactics background or just something that you've been able to kind of analyze yourself, even if you don't have that background, let me know how you would approach certain situations like this or let me know how you think certain equipment is you know, paying so much of an advantage on one side versus another. Especially if there's any pieces of equipment that you guys have seen that have been working really well, things that you know weren't necessarily implemented in older, more traditional tactics. I think drones is, is kind of a big one for sure. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys have anything to recommend, especially if it's other units, we've checked out a lot from the 3rd Assault Brigade and Kraken as well. But if there's any other units doing some great work too, definitely send that my way so we can check it out. But yeah, I think these guys are, are doing a lot of really solid work dealing with you know what they, they have to and, and kind of using what they do. I think they're doing a great job, so. Yeah, hopefully we can see them succeeding, pushing that counteroffensive and trying to take back some of their land. But that is it for this video. I'll see y'all in the next one.